ready to sing. Oh, dude, this is the only part I don't think we want to hear. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. I told you, man, a grown man singing. Getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly we're all bright and breezy because of all the wonderful and new things we're learning about you here today. Yeah! Simon is smooth with Tyrone! Yeah! Wait, wait. I gotta ask him something. Man! Hey, he ain't never had that before, damn it. First of all, ask him, has he ever had a man serenade? No, I never had a man serenade. But, but what was interesting go. is I was looking I'm at the... I'm in touch was, with my feminine yeah, side. Yeah, which was fine. But, you know, I was, I was looking at the video, and I noticed... I, I'll just have to look back at this. I just... It was a little weird, wasn't it, Tyra? I just... I don't know if I caught something that I wasn't supposed to get. Did I see... Yeah, oh, that wasn't was there. There's crazy, yeah. crazy yeah. stuff in yeah. all of them. Yes. Okay. Tyrone, I... It's part of that weird sense of humor. I totally respect <laughs> and appreciate every single bit of your honesty. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah you it. catch it. You everybody. Catch it. I did catch it. Yes, I did, did catch it. I well, did. everybody, take a look. Take a look at this man. Now, I was having issues with the last name, so I asked Victor. To make sure I'm doing it right, Tyrone. It's Dubois. <laughs> I said Dubasay. See, that's what I get for asking. <laughs> See? I, I, I get it all. When I no, because it. that's a fake. Then there's a, you know, there's a famous... W-E-B. That's oh, right. Yeah. And the debate over the role of black folks. And so this whole issue of the pronunciation of the name has to go. So now after all that careful consideration, and I was told it was Dubois. Yeah. But you know, it's Dubois. Dubois. I mean, That's the French pronunciation. Yeah, it's Canadian. Okay, okay yeah, it's Canadian. there you go. See, <laughs> Maxie. Well, see, you had to get that. So everybody get it right. Tyrone Dubois. Tyrone Dubois. There you go. Timeless Tracks, the countdown of the top R&B songs in America. You guys are going to love this. I tell you what, let me, Vic, let me read the first part. Tyrone Dubois is the man from Cincinnati, Ohio, with a smooth and sexy voice Watch yourself. that was heard across the Mojave Desert as you drove between California and Nevada during the overnights and evenings on the weekends for years, for several years. Several. Tyrone was also the 12-time award-winning talk show host on Time Warner Cable System in Torrance, California, with such local guests as Wally George. Oh, love Wally George. <laughs> that, that, that was the one guy who heard me on the air, who heard the phone, and then when I came over there to do the interview, Oh, he would have oh, been shot. Oh, yeah. Wally George, yeah, yeah. Jerry cool. Buss, Dallas Reigns, and national figures such as Mother Love, Irv Rubin, and Ted Hayes. He is diverse as being a spokesperson for furniture and shoe companies, commercials, and voiceovers for national outlets such as Ford Motor Company and VIP services. And he's done consistent movie roles with award-winning director Mark Piro. No, he got that right. Mark's going to appreciate that. So you think Mark Piro. <laughs> Today, Tyrone is spiraling out of control with yes. his radio show. His smooth voice is being sought by top marketers and various females across the nation. His dream for national radio. <laughs> <laughs> it's like adding stuff. It's like adding stuff in. <laughs> This, this show is spiraling out of control. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like I said. That is hilarious. His dream of, being, of a national radio show has finally come true with the show Timeless Tracks, the countdown of the top R&B songs over the last six decades, according to this national R&B singles chart. Check it out. His vast knowledge of the top ten chart music from the last six decades will have you baffled. Being an announcer and master of, ceremony, master of ceremonies is quickly becoming his trademark. Indeed. What is his secret for success? He says it is always a combination of three plus two. Faith, focus, and follow through, along with simplicity and class. Everybody, here's our guest, Tyrone Dubois. Please, hold down your bars. Dubois. Good boy. Nice people here. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. And first of all, I, I got to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, really, for Victor as well as you, Mario, for, for giving me an opportunity to be here. This, I, I just, I've just had like a great time. It's like amazing. <laughs> I, I've learned stuff about dogs and getting to know Good people talk. and talking and <laughs> red lights and just, I'm loving this. But no, I, I, but and also said thank you very much. It's it's an honor to be here, and I and I really appreciate it, and I, I do. Well, you are a special, special brother. I want to know about your early days. Cincinnati, Ohio, and I've met people from Cincinnati. Cold! cold y'all are cold, cold. acclimated. Y'all can handle it. Y'all can handle cold you know when you're from Cincinnati. You know, it's interesting. When I first moved here, I thought something was wrong with people. I said, it's, it's 40 degrees. What's wrong with these people? Why are they wearing coats? I, I did. You know, the first few years? I don't ever have to ask that again because <laughs> now I know why because I'm with, I'm with you. Well, uh, tell us about your early days in Cincinnati. Well, you know, as a kid, I was, I was you know, growing up in Cincinnati, you know, I, I had always had a dream of uh, wanting to be on the radio. My first love was playing baseball, so I played minor league ball for a few years, wow. and um, which was great, you know, when I moved out and I, I decided I wanted to do something different. And so I moved here to Los Angeles and uh, I started out in playing, you know, baseball. And uh, after playing baseball for a while, I decided, you know, my dream was always radio. When I was younger, every week I would listen to Casey Kasem's American Top 40. Oh, you know, yes. On WSA Famous. In Cincinnati. Yeah, I would listen to him. And uh, it was that was a big deal to me. And I always dreamed at some point I would make my way around of, you know, becoming a radio broadcaster. And I, I didn't know when it would happen. I didn't know how it would happen. But, you know, I started in public access television and, you know, Time Warner cable system. It used to be called Group W. And... Um, I started out in their in their system, and I, I started learning how to, you know, make shows and becoming different in some capacity of learning how to to do a television through show. cable access <clears throat> through cable access. Wow! And I started distributing the show all over the country. Now, what show were you doing then? Tyler? I did my own show, but it was based on you know just talk, you know, doing talk radio, you know, talk talk shows with people. I just doing regular interviews from from famous celebrities to just normal people, and we had different conversations. And I always made sure it wasn't time dated. You know, I always thought it was important so that way you could use the show in any kind of way. And um, smart, so, yeah. So that way, you, then it's the same way that I do my radio show, Timeless Tracks, because you know these the music is never time dated. You can always play it. And um, if you tell a little history about the artist, that's how you know I began to do this radio show. Now I gotta ask because just tell me a little bit about your baseball stuff, though, Tyrone. I, I so you, you come, you you came I got up props. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were you because you, you were a young camera? athlete. Are you just right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me qualify this by saying that okay. this was back in the day. Bam! Wow, Vic, can you get a close I, up of man, that? Man, look at the hair. I was, I was hot. That hair. I was hot, man. Wow. wow. I was hot. Look at me. There you go. Man, he I, was angry. I was angry. I had a mouthpiece. We piece. all were angry back then. I had the mouth. Yeah, we were angry. <laughs> I had a mouth. I had a mouthpiece in my mouth then. And uh, when the guy was taking the pictures, what I realized is that I had. Uh, he, I said, "Well, did I hit the home run?" He said, "No, you struck out." <laughs> <laughs> Probably reason why I was angry. Probably. Yeah. Probably reason why I was angry. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, how was Cincinnati? As a, what was Cincinnati like growing up? You know, interesting. Um, you know, of course, you had the four seasons, but you know, when you're younger, I moved at, at 18 years old. I okay. really didn't have a. I guess we were all trying to find my way and what sense of a direction and purpose of what you know you're looking. Right. Right when you're 18, you know, you right. get a little you know, rambunctious and you want to try to find your way of doing something and going right. places. And it was it was really unique for me, but something just always told me that there was something bigger for me somewhere else. Okay. And so, I, you know, you never really know if, you know, you just find this tendency of just wanting to just, just to try it and get out and, and learn and, and leave. And, and that's what I did. And uh, so for a while, you know, I got here to Los Angeles and, uh, you know, I, I played in minor league ball, you know, in the Seattle Mariners organization for about, you know, three or four years, which was great. I mean, I didn't make a lot of money, but, you know, the, the diverse and uh, diversity but of people and the culture and learning about people and, and going different places and doing different things helped me a great deal and being a better Yeah, because leaving, person. I mean, Cincinnati, no matter where we are from, and going somewhere else. Culture shop. Culture shop. Absolutely. A big culture now, shop. And, and at that time, let's just assume you had somewhat of the personality that you have today in that voice. You know what? I, 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 you know, in, in retrospect, when I think back, when people usually ask me, did I have the voice aspect of it, I, I didn't really know that I had the voice aspect, just didn't know what I was going to do. And, you know, we kind of find our way into doing 10 different things until we realize that the one thing we could do the most is the one we think of the least. And so I've kind of made my way into this, 
you know, quite by accident. Believe it or not, I used to drive up to Barstow, California at the uh, train station. There's a radio station there, and that's basically where I started my career. I kind of started it. You used to drive up to Barstow every, to do a radio show? Every, Barstow? I would leave The McDonald's here. stop on the way to Vegas? The, um, the radio station is right up above the McDonald's. <laughs> The radio stations right Anybody above Anybody who's there. driven to Vegas knows that bar that stop. Yeah. yeah. In bar stop. One stop, man. So I have a, wow. I have, have, you know, a full-time job. I would leave my full-time job drive on a Friday, drive up there from maybe about three hours to get to Barstow, yeah. get to the hotel room, sleep for about an hour or so, then get to the radio station about 11 o'clock, and I'd be on the air from midnight to 6. And I mean, you know, but when you have a dream, and I mean, I think we've all been there in some capacity, you know, you're not really working. You're doing what you have to do in order to make a dream come right. true. Didn't know that at the time, but at some point, you know, it helps you to elevate to get to where you where you are today. So, Tyra, what kind of music were you playing there? Well, it was it was fast paced music. It was uh, you know it was pop music. You know, they had like three different stations. They had a country station there, they had a rock one, and they had a pop station. But what it was is, if you were on your way to Vegas, it was the only station that you could get on the way to you know Las Vegas and Lockwood. Right. So you know they played fast paced music so people wouldn't go to sleep. You right. Know? So, so you're driving that lonely highway. Right. So that's what it was. And I mean, it was a it was a great job for me, and it was it it gave me an opportunity to believe that somehow or another there was something just a little bit more for me. You know. We always start off with a little something, and then as as time goes on, we try to find something else. And and that was that was my dream. I said I wanted to do a radio show, and wow. that was uh, that's where I started. So tell us about the journey after your cable access. Well, what's interesting is that I. I, that's I, cable access that has a certain connotation. We think of the plastic trees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or there was this chairs. one guy, and Mario and Victor, there was this one guy who did this this cable show for years, and I always wondered how he was talking, and somehow or another, the tree next to him was always moving. <laughs> there was a plastic tree. So what I found out was, so I went to the studio expressly to find out how he was doing it. He had his foot down, Victor, and as he was talking, he was moving the tree with his foot. So the tree would so the tree, Victor, was like doing this. Oh, that'll make you psychotic. So the tree was doing that and I was like, what a ham. Wow. But but it was it was just part of the media journey to get me to where I am today. I never I always dreamed I would be somewhere. I just didn't know it would be here. I mean and, and this little show where it first began, you know, helped me to now be seen on, you know, 15 million people each week on Unsung, which is, you know, I mean, for me, in my life, one of my, you know, best achievements so far, but um, of course I got more aspirations. But well, tell us about that big break. Well, I mean, the, the radio show started, like everything else starts, you know, you start with a dream more than anything else. Someone told me that, um, didn't think I really had what it takes to make it in radio. And uh, it just catapulted me and just, you know, when usually someone tells me no, it just means I'm going to do it. So I had to just kind of find the niche and I began doing this basically as a pop show. But what happened was I had to finally discover that I, I really needed the opportunity to find a, a niche where people would listen. I knew the pop charts really well. I didn't know the, the R&B charts well. So what happened was I went to the unsung of Sly and the Family Stone. I was working the red carpet for someone else. I'm standing next to this, I'm sitting next to this elderly white man who's asking questions about Sly and the Family Stone and asking about the history of, uh, of Sly Stone. He's saying, I wonder if he had any, um, you know, platinum singles. I said, no, he never had any platinum singles before. I had no idea who I was talking to. And he says, <laughs> well, do you know that? He says, how do you know that? I said, well, you know, he had the number 24 and 25 song in the 70s, you know, uh, it's a family affair, you know, and, you know, dance to the music. So he's still asking me how I know this stuff. I said, well, I do this radio show and I'm telling this guy this. So I gave him a card. He calls me up, tells me to come to his office, tells me he's the executive producer of Unsung. Oh, wow. And he said, wow. would you be willing to come on and talk as a music contributor. So I thought he wanted me to do wow. the voiceovers. But what happened was he actually wanted me to come as a his, basically a historian. Yeah, I'm a, exactly. pretty much. So I had a to verbal learn that. historian and exactly. not just the old duddy kind. Right. One who could bring it with that flair that you have with well, the addition of the voice. Yeah, well you had to learn. And what the cool thing is is that the voice has gotten me a lot of a lot of national work, including the other prop I have here. It Does it out. vibrate? No, it's never. <laughs> Pepto. I did the. Uh, I know a lot of you show seen that the, uh, the oh. uh, Pepto Bismol commercial that comes on TV. Oh the one yeah. With the squirrel. Yeah. That's. I've been doing that commercial. Both of those commercials for the last couple of years or so. Wow. So All I've right. Hey, you get some claps for that. Uh, more claps. The claps. 
Yeah. More claps. Does so penicillin come with that? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't I'm work anymore. Allergic, it does, but it doesn't work. I'm allergic, I'm, I'm allergic to penicillin anyway, so there you go. Um, but, uh, but that's you know how it started for me. And I think for all of us, I think one of the things I've learned is that I, I really, as I was telling you when we were off the air, for me, this in my mind was my last shot of somehow or another trying to make my dream come true. And you know, when you you work around the media and you work around celebrities, you know, I work as a road manager, you know, for Kim Whitley, so it it really got me prepared for this part of my life. And it it was it was really important to me. And like everything that we do is important to us, but this was this was my signature. This right. was it, and I, I needed you. to find a way to make this work no matter what happened so you know I had to sacrifice some things like we all had to do you know when I came in here I mean I, it's clear that you've sacrificed a lot in order to make this dream come true for the both of you and so I definitely understand what that's like particularly in in for my own life and the things in which I'm doing now so now radio shows in 21 cities seven different countries right now I'm number one in in four in four places and and all of that because I really I really wanted to make this work and that that's that's what was important Wow. Now, Mac McAllister, the G&M Bureau Chief, the one you uh, heard from earlier, he is from, Mac, you're from Ohio, I believe. So I know you know these areas that he's talking about. Here's, take, take, here's some pictures, you guys. Take a look. But God, look. That's, that's cool. I'm looking, looking kind of cool. White. Look at that. I'm looking cool in there. <laughs> Tell us about Hair Timeless shape. Tracks. Let's go there right now. Well, Timeless Tracks is based on the top R&B songs in America over the last six decades, according to the national R&B singles charts. And um, I put this this place together. I just said I wanted to learn and be a historian, and I actually got it from Casey Kasem. That's how I learned. Yeah, and yeah. So I, get it. I mean, every week I would definitely listen. Well, and greetings and salutations. Let's take a Thank listen. Thank you so much for visiting TimelessTracks.com. This is the home of the international radio program, Timeless Tracks, the countdown of the top R&B songs in America over the last six decades, according to the national R&B singles charts. Now, for more information on Timeless Tracks, simply press the green at button. You'll also find samples of my radio air checks, voiceovers for local and national radio commercials, auto attendant phone references, information on master of ceremonies, and television experience. You can also like us, Timeless Tracks, on Facebook or follow us at Timeless Tracks on Twitter. So, whether you need a professional voice on your auto attendant phone system, television and radio commercials, or to listen to a program that's, well, timeless, once again, you've come to the right place. Thank you so much for visiting Timeless Tracks and Tarong Dubois. Yeah. That guy gave me that CD. He said, Tyrone, he says, I was in the studio. He says, Tyrone, I got the perfect song for you for your website. I said, you do? He says, I got it for you. I'm going to give it to you. Give it to me. <laughs> gave it to me. I said, I'm going to use it. Now, who is that? Something. Believe it or not, this guy, I met this guy in a mall. Okay? Huh. And he heard the radio show before. He was selling his CDs for Christmas. And he had all kind. It was kind of unique music, like if you're having a Christmas party or something. Right. And so he was selling these CDs. So he said he knew who I was. He said he heard my show before somewhere. He says, "I want you to go on this track over here." And he says, "I want you to play number two. He says, "I want you to put it on your website." He said, "It'll be great." And I said, "Okay." So I listened to it and I went, "Yeah, you're my man." So he helped me out a great deal. And I mean, I, I, you know, the little things that matter the most, and that's what's gotten me here today. You know. Sharing and, and, and being able to give other people as well. I mean, it's a big deal for me, especially now. I mean, I'm I'm close to two years now being cancer free, and that 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 significantly took oh, a big wow. toll of you know of sure. where I wanted to be today. You know, and I think that that kind of shapes our lives, of the things in which we do. Sure, it does. So I'm 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 there now. You know, in my head, I I got to put my foot on the gas and just make this happen right now and not make excuses, just get results. Well, I'm telling you, it's impressive, and you have this as an ongoing project so what what things are you looking forward to now in the future because i got a feeling we're gonna probably throw some ideas your way. <laughs> <laughs> well you know what's cool is that I, I was approached by a national um a national television station a, a few days ago who is interested in having me as the voice of their station yeah which is hey, really cool which is hey, really good hey, can class. i get the claps <laughs> <laughs> no penicillin either there you go there you go thank you 
No penicillin. Victor, next time I come, I need some penicillin around here. <laughs> yeah, you probably just yelled over there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> maybe I do need some penicillin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, you do. But um, yeah, I but I was approached a couple of days ago, and I, I'm going to see if that works out. If it does, that'd be fantastic. You know, for me, unsung is really you know, although the radio show is the most important thing that I'm doing, the fact that you know I'm able to do the unsung episodes in a couple of weeks, I'll be on with uh, CC Peniston. That's the uh, finale wow. of the unsung this week. You'll also see me on the one for Martha Wash, the one who was at Two Tons yeah, of Fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did the Manhattans, and uh, a couple weeks ago, um, yeah, I did the. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, I want to give a special shout out to my friend, uh, the last singer, original singer of the Shy Lights, Marshall Thompson of the Shy Lights. I did their uh, their unsung a few weeks ago. So wow. you know, life is good. I mean, this is this was my dream, and you know, the one thing I've learned is just to plan your work and, and work your plan. So. For me, on on my Facebook, you know, I'm always positive. I, I I really believe in just giving and you know helping others and and really trying to make this come true. Not just for me, but to help other people as well. I just think that's just a big big deal to me. I think I've I've in the shuffle of sometimes when we're trying to be better or trying to do things for ourselves, we sometimes get lost with some of the other you know wanting for me me me. But you know, a couple of years ago, I didn't think there was going to be a me. So once I got that back, I just realized I'm just going to make this work, and uh, I've worked hard at it now. Well, it shows, my brother. Everybody, you can check him out. Take a look at the website, Timeless Tracks. TimelessTracks.com. Well, you can like easy. us on Twitter at Timeless Tracks. Tanya will love that. And uh, or like us on Facebook at our Timeless Tracks page as well. And uh, I, I have to tell you, for every single one of you who have a dream, you know, the six most important words I tell people, plan your work work your plan and that that always works for me you have to be willing to be you know i i met casey Kasem once i got this show started and i said mr Kasem, you know i would i can i give you my show can i listen you know let you listen to it i used to listen to you as a kid and sir can i get you my show he goes ah, i'm not gonna listen to it i went that's okay i said i'm gonna be just like you i said you're the reason i got in the radio he says good luck so this guy was behind him and i found out actually it was his son huh. and he said send it to him he gave me a card and so I send him the show. I get a phone call. Tyrone, is this Tyrone? And you know, Casey Casey was yeah, voices. Yeah, you know that. You know that. Yes, right. You, you can't. Mistake and I said, that. yes, sir. And he said, this is Casey Kasem. Didn't I tell you not to send me that show? <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's gonna kill me. I said, yes, sir. You know, the truth is, I guess I got a little overzealous. I look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I said, look, I, 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 you were my idol, and I guess I just wanted you to hear it. Next thing out of his mouth. Now I got to show you how to do it right. <laughs> <laughs> So it was great, and it was great. And, you know, and, and these little things like this, somebody who's willing to take the chance and give you an opportunity, it's, it's huge. And it's what's made me, you know, where I am today. So I'm a giver. I, I really and truly believe in wanting others to make it in this world. You know, life is really too short. And especially after the, the cancer surgery I had a couple of years ago, I, I really and truly believe that right now my destiny is to make my dream come true, but to try to help others to do the same. And that's that's kind of where I'm at. So even for what you've done here for others, what you do here, you give people the opportunity here. You've got a unique you know, place here. And I, I can't imagine, you know, you did what everybody else wouldn't. That's how we've gotten here. You know, I always tell people, I, Jim Rome said something to me, he says, you better tell people not what makes you better, but what makes you different. Different will always get you what you want. Better comes with expectations. And that's true. Wow. Yeah, very true. All day. Yeah. Wisdom. Wisdom <clears throat> yeah. in the red light district. And he's bringing wisdom. in words of wisdom. Everybody, I Damn. guess. More claps. Tyrone. <laughs> Good wow. Come on, everybody. Let's I, sing. I, no more singing. I, Come on. I've, I've never had the claps like that. <laughs> Go on you need about some bass in this song, man. You need bass. <laughs> Get it like you. There's no bass. Get it to hope you like me. There you go. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly we're all bright and breezy. Oh, there's that picture again. Because of all the wonderful and new things we're learning about you day by day. Yeah! Sippin', schmoozin'.